So when we talk about our BI semantic model and how these pieces fit together, again, the BI semantic model isolates logic and modeling from sources and client access. So we have our tabular data modeling, we have our multi-dimensional cube design, we have the logic and the access that we provide as a part of those tools in one layer. And these models can pull their data from any of a variety of data sources, whether it's databases, line of business applications, spreadsheets, text files. They've provided a whole set of different APIs for interacting with external data sources. So we can then pull this information into single models, take those models, build our reports, build our dashboards, build our scorecards, build custom apps, whatever we want to do, can then interact with the model and not have to be, recreate all that extra effort coming from the various data sources. We now have a central point for managing that. Now, if we're doing it from a personal BI perspective, they might be using Excel with the Power Pivot add-on to take advantage of this. If we're doing it from a team perspective, we might be doing it using SharePoint, where you're using your dashboard creation and your scorecard creation against those BI semantic models to create web-based reports. And if we're doing it from a corporate perspective, we might be using the full power of analysis services and the data mining tools against those BI models to give us the structure to go along with the power of analysis services. This is an important shift in the way they're looking at information. Being able to build these models on the fly, both from the client side, but also more importantly, being able to build them from the central server perspective and then make them available to the clients is a very important concept. All right, so when we look at this BI semantic model and what underlies it, we have a variety of different components that can be considered a part of the BI semantic model. Multi-dimensional projects that are built in analysis services, tabular model projects that are built within SQL Server data tools, and our Power Pivot workbooks, which can use the Power Pivot component to build these models as well. So each one of these different portions of the semantic model have different aspects to them. When I'm working from the personal perspective in Excel with Power Pivot, I'm going to be building tabular models. It only works in Excel 2010 and, and newer, of course. And it uses DAX expressions. Your DAX expressions give you the ability to do your data analysis expressions. So these are special SQL-like statements. They're not actually SQL, but they have that same look and feel that give you the ability to build expressions that analyze data, whether they're time-based expressions, regression analyses, any of those types of things. But we can use those expressions as if they were functions in our formulas in our Excel environment. It does use what we call in-memory caching and pass-through. So the idea behind this is that it caches the data inside the Excel file. When you use Power Pivot, if I hit 100 million records, it's not going back and forth to the server every time. It's actually going to store that 100 million records in a compressed format inside of Excel. That's why we call it in memory. And these Power Pivot workbooks can be deployed. Well, they can be used directly, obviously, but they can also be interacted with through analysis services as a data source, and they can be deployed to SharePoint assuming that the SQL Server Power Pivot features and the SharePoint Power Pivot features have been enabled. And it gives you visualizations that we call galleries to interact with that Power Pivot data. When we talk about our new tabular projects that we can build, again, these are tabular models, but we have to use our SQL Server data tools. Now, your SQL Server data tools is simply the newest version of what used to be called BIDS, your business intelligence development environment. So your BIDS environment is now replaced by SQL Server data tools, which has all of the data projects that you need, including the tabular projects. It still uses your DAX expressions, but now it has two options. It has the in-memory, so it can still cache that data in memory, but it can also do what's called a direct query where the data is being stored in the relational system, be it SQL Server or whatever else, 
and you're pulling the data on demand. There are benefits and limitations to that that we'll talk about more when you come to the class. <laughs> Finally, for deployment, when we're working with our Tabular projects, they can be deployed through analysis services primarily. Our final piece is our multi-dimensional projects. This is truly your analysis services, the building of the cubes. It creates multi-dimensional models as opposed to tabular models. So rather than looking at the tables independently, it's creating that aggregation set based on the relationships that you've built. It is still built using our SQL Server data tools, but now it uses MDX expressions, our multi-dimensional expressions. And it stores that data using MOLAP, ROLAP, or HOLAP. When we're talking about MOLAP, that's our multi-dimensional online analytical processing. ROLAP is our relational online analytical processing, and our HOLAP is our hybrid between the two. So where do we want the data stored? Should it be in the cube? Should it be in the database? Or somewhere in between, some combination of the two. That BI semantic model, of course, has to interact with all sorts of different kinds of environments. So through the MDX querying language, you can take data from any one of these models, pull it into third-party applications, pull it directly into reporting services, interact with it directly from Excel, from our Power Pivot, and from SharePoint. So all of these tools have the ability to work directly with the MDX. And in fact, most of these tools actually have MDX query designers that will allow you to graphically create the data you want, and it will write the MDX for you. If you want to do it through your Power View, which is one of the new features in 2012, then you have to use your DAX queries rather than your MDX queries. Those same DAX queries are also available to third-party applications if you so choose. And of course, what would these models be if they didn't have underlying data for us to interact with? That underlying data can be any line of business application, it can be physical files, it can be data feeds, cloud services, other deployed semantic models, and naturally, relational databases from a variety of different sources. All right, wrapping up our BI semantic model, the goal here was to create flexibility for both your tabular and multidimensional modeling, to create new ways of interacting with that data through DAX and MDX, to create better caching and pass-through models to improve performance, and to give end users the ability to pick what kind of UI they want to provide for those end users. How should BI be interacted with? They wanted richness. We need fine-grained security. We need the ability to build rich reporting, rich modeling, rich interactivity. And it needed to scale for performance.